Hello, public opinion aficionados, and welcome to Rasmussen Reports, the independent and accurate pollster who has now put the 2024 election season in the bag. We wrapped our polling and yesterday put out our final call, and we're going to get into it today. But I want to talk about accuracy. We are very accurate, and it's because we're trying to be. We're not trying to shill for Democrats. And a real test of accuracy is being very close time after time after time. You've probably heard a lot of names thrown around as the most accurate pollster, and sometimes that is just the function of, you know, a lucky cycle. But we are there at the top of the rankings, and we intend on being there again. So we put our final call out yesterday. We took a good look at all of our October data and sharpened the pencil and took a really good crunch. And we have the cross tabs. You're going to absolutely want to see them. But before you do, since we're talking about our state numbers today as well, they were sponsored by American Thinker for September and both cycles in October. We're very grateful that they enabled us to go out into the field for more state polling than we've ever done. So I would really appreciate it if you went to their website, signed up for their daily newsletter, and maybe gave them a follow on Twitter as well. While you're there, why don't you send a tweet their way, say you're thankful for what they do, and maybe even mention that you came from Rasmussen Reports. But here are our final national cross tabs. And it's a lot of data. It's almost all of our October data. To be honest with you, with people voting early more than they ever have and dropping out of the polls. Last couple of days have just been kind of weird. And mostly I trust our late September and early October polling. I will also say that I think in the online panels, there is some level of brigading going on and also some major 500 pound gorillas who are in there, uh, you know, fatiguing the panel as it were. But we're used to that kind of garbage. And I'm very confident in these numbers. If the 2024 election were between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump, who would you vote for? And basically 12,000 U.S. likely voters regionally balanced across the nation and weighted to these demographics, 48% male, 52% female. Uh, yeah, this one is a little bit more white, to be honest with you. We've been using 67%. Based on the early data, it looks like minority turnout is really depressed. And I'll also say that we are still weighted Democrat plus two. And it's Trump plus three. That might be a surprise to everybody who's been following our daily numbers. We've had Trump plus two week after week after week. And it really is kind of, you know, 48.8, 46.3. It's really two and a half. It's on the skinny side of two and a half. But the way the rounding works, it's Trump plus three. And quite frankly, I'm happy it's like that because I do think based on the early data, based on a lot of hunches and based on some stuff with the recalled vote, which we can get into in a little bit, I think there's a chance that Trump outperforms our national popular vote number. Winning among men by eight points, down only three points among women. Listen, if this holds up, all of the cope you're hearing on the internet is that, wow, women are turning out big in the early voting. The thing is, is that they always vote early. And here, they aren't even really breaking for Harris by that much. Harris is up two among 18 to 39-year-olds. This would be incredible if it holds up. Trump was winning. Trump was winning among younger, younger voters when Biden was in the race. But this is way tighter. I mean, just go back to 2016 and look at how strongly 18 to 39-year-olds went to Hillary Clinton. But a lot of those 18 to 39-year-olds back then are now 40 to 64-year-olds, and they're going Donald Trump by five points. That's a little bit narrower than it's been, but I'm happy we got a really big sample because what I see makes a lot more sense. In some of the weekly polls, we had 65 and older going to Harris, but here they're going to Trump by uh, four points. And so what you're seeing is probably the white, liberal, suburban a uh, higher educated individual that's your Harris supporter being spread out amongst this entire set of age brackets. White voters go Trump by eight. I, you know, we'll see. It says 30% of the black vote going to Trump. Now, do I think that many black voters change their minds? No, but this is a likely voter poll. And if traditionally Democrat Black areas do not turn up. You might get a number this high. And not only that, it might not even show up in the exit polling because of the way they weight those things. And the Hispanic vote too, Trump by five points. We'll see. I'm really sticking my neck out on the line with this one. I, I, I mean, seriously, I'm not doing Spanish language polls. I'm not 
asking very specific questions that you'd want to know to get an accurate Hispanic vote. Like, do you speak Spanish at home or are your family immigrants or whatever? But still, the trend is Trump's friend year after year. And it looks like he's winning the Hispanic vote, which was the voting block that Democrats planned to make their permanent super majority. And Trump finishes with a slightly higher crossover advantage than he's had, a few points of advantage over Harris, and is winning by seven points among independents. Again, I'm not sure if the exit polling is going to be accurate here. The independents are kind of a grab bag, and you really could get with Trump winning this much of the independents, again, if liberal independents sit it out. So let's take a look at the states. This is all of our state polling. We finally got all 12 crosstabs out. If you had to ask me, I would be more confident in my September and October 15th set of state polling. But again, it's all still really good news for Trump. Arizona, Trump plus two. Georgia, Trump plus six. We had plus five way back against Biden, but then plus three in the middle of September. Michigan's been back and forth between a Harris plus one and a tie. I'm least confident in my Michigan samples. And what everybody says is that Michigan is most likely going to vote the same way as Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. So we'll see. Minnesota was still Harris plus three, although it did narrow a little bit. Nevada, Trump plus two, very solidly Trump plus two. But this is one of those ones where I think I'm erring to the left based on the fact that Republicans look like they're going into election day with their own firewall, which is definitely a new thing. New Hampshire, Harris plus one within, I mean, that's a statistical tie. That is a possible Trump pickup. New Mexico, one point to the right. If Trump outperforms by a point or two, he's within the margin of error. North Carolina looks safe as it should be. It went to Trump by a point and a half in 2020. And when all of the national polling moves six to seven points to the right, there's no way that one random swing state moves to the left. I just don't see it. Ohio, I think Trump does better than this. Pennsylvania, Trump plus three, Trump plus two. I think Trump's going to win Pennsylvania comfortably. And I guess we'll just have to wait and see about the electoral hijinks. We had Texas at Trump plus six. I think Trump does better than that. Harris plus two in Virginia within the margin of error and a possible Trump pickup. And then Wisconsin, wow, Trump plus three. And it really was, I mean, when I pulled it, it felt like right where movement in the state, it's in line with Pennsylvania. That kind of makes sense. And we'll get into Wisconsin more in a little bit. Um, to talk about the Senate quick, we've had Lake trailing two to four points last couple of times we've run this. If Trump outperforms Arizona, and I think it looks like he will, she's within striking distance. Um, the Michigan race, I think, was pretty close. Minnesota, there's no chance. Nevada, Sam Brown, we had one where he was really close and one where he was down big. I think it's the same situation with Arizona. I think the polls are underemphasizing Republican support and the straight ticket effect might help these people. So I would kind of put Nevada and Arizona into the same camp. If Trump outperforms our polling significantly, they could be pickups. And Ohio, our polling showed, looks like a definite Trump pickup. McCormick has been really neck and neck this entire time. I think he's the next most likely pickup on this list. And I actually had Eric Hobby up a point in Wisconsin. So I would say just there is three Republican pickups. Also, we had Montana. That would be uh, four. So it looks like potentially the baseline there is uh, Republicans at 54 in the Senate. Now we're going to get to some maps, but before we do that, I want to reiterate that these American Thinker crosstabs are available publicly on our website. So you can look. And one of the things I think you'd want to be looking for, besides all the incredible issue questions, is to go down and see who is winning. In this case, in Arizona, we have Trump up two. And then go out to see how people respond based on when they say they're going to vote. Because what you're hearing across the board, especially in the Sun Belt, is that Democrat turnout is down and Republicans are crushing it in the early vote. And look here, Trump is up 
65 to 33 among people who say they vote early in person. And Harris only has a slight lead in the vote by mail segment. Now, it probably will be bigger than that. But what everybody's saying to cope is that Republicans are cannibalizing their election day vote. But a lot of people say they're still going to vote in person on election day. And those people break Trump by eight points. So if the Democrats go into election day down at all, they're not going to be able to dig themselves out of that hole unless they magically find more mail-in ballots. So looking at the maps, this is based on all of our polling and anything within one point I put as a toss-up. Trump wins. If our state polling is too right, and really we're kind of in line with the real clear politics aggregate, I do not think that's going to be the case because I think the aggregate is being left shifted by all the same chuckleheads like Bloomberg and Morning Consult. But let's just take Pennsylvania out of the situation. Trump still wins at 272. This is the same map, but I took away the toss-ups. Trump is still up 291, but Democrats have picked up 247. Okay, I think my state polling is too left. Let's shift all of it to the right two points, or let's just say Donald Trump outperforms our polling by two points. Here's the new map. Trump picks up 310. He's picked up Michigan. He's picked up New Hampshire. And now Virginia is a toss up and the Democrats are down to 215. Virginia is literally tied in this scenario and New Hampshire may flip. We're going to hear about those states really early on election day. If Virginia or New Hampshire flip, nobody's going to care about delaying the vote in Pennsylvania. And I think that would be very important. Again, the risk of violence in this country is higher than I think it's ever been. It will not be a good thing, regardless of who wins, if the election is dragged out and people are not confident in the results. But I want to bring up another very important point. Here is the 2020 polling. It had Biden up seven points at this point in the race, and he only won by four and a half. So the polling on average missed left. But here's what I want to show you. The final result was Biden plus 4.5. Keep that number in your head. But here are the battleground results. Biden literally squeaked it out with 0 0.03 points. Reported results, not polling in the battlegrounds, which means that the battlegrounds were four and a half points to the right of the national popular vote. Let's look at 2016. Hillary Clinton won by 2.1. Now, the polling was left here too, but it really tightened up at the end. I mean, it was really, it was like Clinton plus six or seven almost this entire time. So it's like everybody at once decided to stop shilling for Democrats. It's kind of like where we're at now. But anyways, 2.1. But here are the battlegrounds. Trump won by 1.7. That's almost four points. So it's like four and a half points, four points. The state results are four points to the right of the national popular vote. Here is the current polling for the national popular vote. It's a tie. Now, before we talk about any leftward polling bias, and I still think there is some because Morning Consult and Reuters Ipsos are still in this thing, that means Trump probably is going to get about four points in the battlegrounds. The polling right now says Trump's going to get one point in the battlegrounds, and Wisconsin's roughly tied. Michigan's got Harris up a point. I think Trump is going to sweep the battlegrounds, even though my polling doesn't say it. You probably haven't heard the race explained that way in very simple logic that kind of overlooks the error of the polls. I didn't talk about polling error this time out. I, to be honest with you, I think, you know, we have Trump plus three. I think Trump's going to outperform this tie. We could have Trump winning some of the battlegrounds by five, six, seven points. It could be like Reagan Carter 1980, or at least Reagan Carter 1980, if you stripped Anderson out of the race and gave Carter roughly 70% of his votes, you'd get Reagan up four or five points. I think that's what we might see.
Patrick Ruffini, smart guy. Look, we are seeing the makings of a Dem turnout disaster in all of Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, and Nevada, the Sun Belt. It's true none of these states are likely the pivotal ones, but a clear lesson of 2016 is that if minority turnout is bad in the Sun Belt, it's also bad in Philly, Detroit, and Milwaukee. Signs are not looking good for the Rust Belt. Here's Mark Halperin. My reporting is that she is in trouble in Wisconsin. This is based on three sources, two Republicans, one Democrat, all of whom know the state quite well, and all of whom told me today they would be somewhere between surprised and shocked if Kamala Harris won Wisconsin. Listen, if Trump gets the Sun Belt, she's got to sweep the Rust Belt. Not looking good at all. And so Rich Barris says, this is the doom phase. You try to suppress the vote of your opponent. Democrats are doing it better. The right is easy to get dooming. I do think there's some truth in that statement, although I do think that people on the right are crawling over broken glass to vote right now, but he's absolutely correct. What they're trying to do is demoralize voters, keep them from coming out on election day, because depending on the state, 40 to 50% of Trump's vote is still out there and it has to show up. I'm surprised we haven't seen crazier things over the last couple of days. We saw them try to blame Trump for inciting violence against Liz Cheney. We saw the Nazi thing. We saw the Puerto Rico joke. I don't think any of that moved the needle. It's almost like the media jumped the shark, created their own echo chamber, and they're just preaching to the choir right now. And it's kind of sad, but like, let's go to CNN. Closing arguments. Oh, the Diddy case. Interesting. What do we got about Trump? Well, we, okay, he's trying to win over female voters. My polling shows he's only down three points among women voters. Oh, he got frustrated with his mic. Stop the presses. Delay the vote, everybody. Trump got frustrated with his mic. The Chips Act? What? Something more rally mishaps and some immigrant said that people like her infected a Colorado city. Trump said that. I mean, and now we got Bolton. Bolton said Trump is going to be a dictator and declare early victory. Like there's fear bait, minutia. What do we got about? Okay, over here, Democrats are trying to make it about abortion, trying to push the gap with male voters. Her gap with male voters is way bigger than Trump's gap with women, I'll tell you that. It doesn't have to be this way. And some pop stars. This is all over the place. I don't whatever. MSNBC Cope. Take a breath. 10 things. You guys still have a chance. Preview an election night. Republicans are worried about women voters. Evidence suggests they should be. No, I think Democrats should be worried about a lack of election day voters. They don't, they really don't like Vance. And again, seeding the narrative that Trump is going to overturn the election. Oh, Elon Musk is spreading misinformation about elections. This is the mouthpiece of the Harris campaign in the Democrat Party. They're going. This is what they're going to be talking about. Misinformation and attempts to overthrow democracy. Whatever. In my opinion, this is what the Internet's talking about. A lot of really positive, cool, and interesting stuff. It looks like it might finally be happening. And Ron Paul might be engaged in some official capacity in the Trump campaign. Elon's been tweeting about it. I mean, this is serious. If Elon hires Ron Paul, mean meme magic might just break the world. And speaking of meme magic, like, listen, this is really sad about Fred and Peanuts. I'm really sorry that that happened. But the internet is turning this into a meme legend like Harambe. And they're trying to get Trump to tweet about it and saying that if he tweets, Valiant Renegade, I love it. If Trump tweets for Peanuts, he wins New York. Yeah, I mean, massive early voting in Georgia and North Carolina. Abortion ban debate intensifies. Yeah, they're trying to make it about abortion, but wow. Rashida declines a Harris endorsement. They're, like, I don't see anything that's, oh my God. Man, I don't see anything that's doomed. So it looks like they're failing on that regard. The media jumped the shark. Look, Trump is going down, is trending on Twitter. But the number one friend on Twitter right now is Peanut. Fascinating. So there it is, folks. I think Trump wins comfortably. 
I think he has a chance of winning every one of the battlegrounds, although Michigan looks pretty murky based on my polling. But again, I think he's going to outperform my state polls, which means he probably sweeps the battlegrounds. And election riggers would be wise to steer clear of attempts to desperately cling on to the one or two states that Harris needs. And that little thing I showed you with the national popular vote tells me, again, the state polling is too left. So Trump could have some really serious numbers in a way that all the early data seems to acknowledge is happening right now. Democrats are just not showing up in the same numbers they did four years ago, and Republicans still have a massive amount of gas in the tank. And listen, if we're starting to talk about Virginia and New Hampshire pickups, like Trump could be in the 320s. So I know a lot of people are nervous, and they should be because I think the kleptocratic oligarch regime in D.C. is at its most desperate right now to try to prevent a Trump win. There's really not a lot of time left, but what they need to do is to depress turnout on election day. So everybody should have their heads on a swivel. But if you're nervous and you got some anxiety, my advice to you would be to get on Twitter and tweet about poor Fred and Peanut. So follow me on Twitter at Mark underscore R underscore Mitchell and join the fun. Follow our main account at Rasmussen underscore poll. Follow us on YouTube or Rumble if that's your thing. Really love to have you there. Like the video while you're at it and thanks for watching.